Okay. Who saved? Who invested in precious metals? I did. Lead, copper, and brass. <laughs> A uh, local range slash gun shop ran out of ammo. I have a lot of am nine millimeter ammo. Uh, people were coming in and buying hollow points <laughs> at a very high price. You know, Twenty rounds of uh, you know for thirty bucks of hollow points to shoot. I traded. An undisclosed amount of nine millimeter ammo in order to get this pro series. Uh, I'm not a pro, I am a hoarder. Um, and this was back when I thought Hillary was going to become president. I believed the fake news. And this is a, a Model 627 Pro Series. Um, it's a four inch barrel. And it's not the four and a quarter inch that they can sell in Canada. It, the cylinder's cut for moon clips. Uh, I have not used moon clips. We have shot this. I just clean my guns very well. <laughs> hey, what can I do? Oh, yeah. I like clean guns. Now, blued gun, I wouldn't have cleaned that. I, I, I would have wiped it down with some hoppies and uh, called it a day and been happy. Uh, this one, I simply used a lead free or a lead cleaning cloth it wiped right off uh, the hoppies did not take it off uh, but the lead cleaning cloth did the job uh, this uh, uh you know uh I try not to do that <laughs> some of the newer smith and wessons don't have the uh, uh, ejector rod connected to this pin up front to hold the cylinder in place. They use a, a ball detent back here, but this one still uses the old Tried and true ejector rod in the front and in the back to hold together. Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> I don't even know what to say. We all know what that's called. <laughs> uh, the cylinder holes are chamfered. I don't have an eight speed or an eight speed, <laughs> an eight shot speed loader. Um, also these ratchet detents look like they're more nicely cut than usual. I don't know, I don't know it makes a difference. It's an end frame. What is this? Model 627-5. It's the slab sided barrel. I don't know that I like that. Uh, it's, and it has a, a recessed muzzle crown. If I can get that to focus. As always, I'm using my iPad. Replaceable front sight, adjustable for windage rear sight. Uh, it shoots dead on. I have a video of Yvonne shooting four rounds in two minutes <laughs> that I put up a couple days ago. Um, it's an end frame. It is heavy. It's, I think, 41 ounces, and you can feel every ounce, except for when you shoot 357 Magnums out of it. And in that case, 
you can really appreciate every ounce that goes into this gun. Don't know that I like the rubber grips either. And move things out of the way. Um, I have a black on white image. Uh, they fit well. The finger grooves don't quite uh, excite me a whole lot, uh, but but they do fit my hand. And Yvonne absolutely loves this. Uh, she she went gaga when she saw this revolver and, and said, "We must shoot it," which we did. Um, everything works on it. Everything's clean. Everything's lined up. There's, it's a, it's a one, it's not a sleeved barrel. The barrel is not sleeved. Uh, that's actually just crowning uh, in the muzzle. Uh, some of the newer Smith & Wessons do have a, a two-piece sleeved barrel. But this is one piece. I think. <laughs> I'm going to go with that. And boy, what else can I say? Uh, the trigger pull it averages on my lineman. Calibrate it. Not actually calibrate it. Checked for accuracy. Digital trigger gauge. And the way you check it for accuracy is you weigh out five pounds of water in a water jug on a scale that you know works. And then you hang it from the Lyman digital trigger gauge, and if it says five pounds, if it reads five pounds, it's properly calibrated. So I'm getting, uh, we saw that this was unloaded, a very smooth nine pounds, two ounces, on, on average, and it's pretty much all, all the shots were about the same, and four pounds single action um, shooting 38 special out of this range ammo it's like shooting a 22 uh, I would say that it's not fun <laughs> because you don't get any kind of sensation that you're you're shooting a firearm <laughs> Especially when you shoot 38 special, shoot 357 Magnum, and then go back to 38 special. It's like, yeah, where's the fun in that? Uh, anything else I can say? Boy, it's uh, entirely mem. <laughs> the entire gun is me metal injection molded. No, it's not. Um, it's a, a forged frame, forged yoke, forged cylinder. Forged barrel, uh, the only min parts would be the trigger, the hammer, and a couple of the internal parts. Uh, wouldn't it be funny if the Hillary hull was made out of forged metal? <laughs> and that's pretty much that. I mean, what, what more can you say about a revolver? Um, it wasn't used in any famous movies or any movies that anybody would have seen. Uh, it was used by me and Yvonne. Oh, it's, a, it, it, it's an eight round, uh, which is really kind of weird because I have 1911s and 45 that only hold seven rounds and one in the chamber. So, uh, 357, eight rounds of 357. Eight rounds of 45 ACP. I don't know. What do you think? Uh, but th this trigger is just just super smooth. Try to pull back so it right about there, and then it just breaks. I'm trying to stage this, yeah. I don't shoot that way. I think staging a trigger is insane because. I've done it at a range with the gun pointed down range and it can go off at any point and you have no control over it. 
Uh, there are some revolvers that I've used that stage really easily, uh, but they have crummy triggers. And I guess that's why you, you can stage them. I don't, I don't know that any manufacturer makes triggers so that you can stage it. And there, you know, there we go. And bang, it goes off. Uh, I don't do that. I, I, I think that that's absolutely ridiculous. If you're going to stage a trigger, just pull the hammer back. Uh, at least you know what you have going on. And that's it. It comes with uh, somewhere in the, that box. Uh, two moon clips. Two whole moon clips. Uh, which I don't intend to use. And which aren't needed. And I'd like to try to find a holster for this. Uh, most of the holsters that I've seen hang down to your knee. Um, or they're back ordered from Galco, for example. Uh, a shoulder holster, which I really do not want uh, for something as large as this. And um, looking at wooden grips, the frame ends right about here. So, where that line is I'm drawing, above my fingernail. So boot grips are available. Uh, I could probably get away with shooting boot grips it, uh, without too much recoil. The question is balance uh, with, with so much weight out front. Do I really want to use? And, and these actually aren't quite long enough for my hand. <laughs> so going, going any shorter m might, might look cool, but I don't think it'll work as well. And there's the sight picture. And that's the way I line the sight up. Uh, the top of the front sight, top of the rear sight, center it, go bang. And point of aim, point of impact, especially after you've adjusted it. Sighted it in. And there you go. Um, so, and too late to invest in those precious metals now, but I got this even up. It was a $1,000 revolver and barely put a dent in my pile. Take care.